So today we're taking a look at the Paramount Shade, and this is a Paramount Shade with the wand tilt operator. And we're just gonna go ahead and disassemble this and take a look inside of it. One of the first things I'm gonna do is come down here to the cord tensioner, the wand tether down here at the bottom of the, of the wand here. I'm just gonna pop him apart, and it's just a Phillips head screwdriver, small Phillips head screwdriver is gonna be needed to do all the stuff we're gonna look at here. That guy rotates off, that's just a a device to keep tension there on the cord. And a lot of times uh, I don't have a lot of things break on Paramount. Sometimes people want to replace the cord because over time it's gotten dirty or something up in the window. These are really durable shades made to last a long time so that's kind of I don't see this break um, really. I, I see it pull out of the lead carrier here maybe sometimes but uh, we're just going to go ahead and pull it apart and take a look. I'm going to go ahead and push up on this device here. That allows me to rock the wand out. And I might want to take a little screwdriver here, just stick it in between there. Just rocking it out without driving that metal piece out can sometimes make it tough to get apart. This guy comes off, and I'm going to rock the, sh the uh, metal guy out of there. And that's basically the wand operator here up in the headrail is what I have left. I'm going to go ahead and remove the end cap here. There's two small Phillips head screws on each end of this shading. I'm going to go ahead and remove the end cap. Phillips head screws. There's my two Phillips head screws I just removed. Those two guys there. Take them out of the picture here. Take the end cap off. I always try and stick the screws in the end cap so I don't lose them on the carpet or something like that. Now if I look at the end of this here, I've got the tilt rod in here held by a Phillips head screw, a little plastic device here held by a Phillips head screw. I'm going to come on down to this end and remove the end cap. This is easily done. Uh, this is a small shade for doing it under the camera, but this is pretty easily done out in the home there. I can lay this thing down on the floor and kind of deal with it. Taking this end off, I've got the same thing going on. I've got that shaft held in by a screw on a little barrel inside there. So now I've got both ends off. This is my tilt rod here. This is my cord that causes it to traverse. So the next thing I have to do to kind of get this thing apart is undo the screws on the tilt rod. I'm just going to unscrew this guy here. Now if I was just, and I want to hold on to the tilter because that wants to rotate. So I'm holding on to the tilter and undoing that screw. And that screw is just a screw that fits into the groove of the drive shaft. That screw is just fitting into that groove in the drive shaft there, um, holding that drive shaft in place. Now, if I'm not careful, looking at this guy, I want to take all these little screws and stuff, stick them in an end cap so they're easily found again. All of those little guys. Um, very, very tough. I'd get on the parts request and get some extra stuff before I started messing with these. Now for some people, I may just be changing out this cord device here, this tilt device, but I've got the cord going down through the whole shade. So something I'm going to want to do if I'm going to remove this is I want to come over here and get both ends of the tilt rod free. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to hold on to my carriers here, I'm going to remove this screw. I'm going to have to lay it on its side to do it because I've got to hold the tilt tilter. And I can put my finger on the tilt rod here. That's going to help me hold it as well. And that guy doesn't want to come out. So there's the screw. There's another barrel attached to the shaft. Going to hang on to those guys. Again, stick them in the end cap so I don't lose those little screws and guys. So now I've got this thing pretty much undone. Got my tilt mechanism over here. I've got the free end here. I'm going to go ahead and pop the free end out here. And I want to keep the shaft in all the carriers. I go ahead and pop my active end out here, which is the clutch. Now if I'm just replacing this guy, I don't even want to take this shade any further apart. I can undo the cord here at this screw location here 
loosen that up, pull the cord through, unlace it through here, and replace just this guy if I had to deal with it. I wouldn't take everything out of the headrail. For our purposes today, we're going to take everything out, and I would keep it on the drive shaft. And if this is a really huge shade, I don't have to take it any further out of the headrail than this. Now looking at this, I've got this cord going down through the thing. I want to look at how that cord's going, if the cord's still in there, I want to look at how it's going through there. I don't want it crossing over anywhere. And if you can see, you can see this cord comes down, goes around the end, and ties off here at this lead carrier feature here. So sometimes this screw is ending up missing. Sometimes uh, this whole carriage of the lead carrier has broken off. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and look at taking my shaft out of my carriers here. And if I look at my carriers, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and take the rail away. If I look at my carriers here, coming in and looking at it, I've got a little C-clip on here that holds the carrier in place, and I've got this spacer that spaces it in from the end of, of the uh, tilt mechanism here. So the, I want to engage the tilt mechanism in, into the shaft here, but I want to space it out so I have room for that end vane to turn. So that's the spacer there. I'm going to go ahead and remove my spacer. just comes off. Just a little plastic guy. My C-clip here, I want to remove him. I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers to get that guy off. don't want to damage that in any way. And on a carpet, this can be hard to see. So I want to stick all that stuff in my end cap over here. I've got my carriers out now. Now I can go ahead and remove my drive shaft. And I'm going to just slide the drive shaft out one way or the other. And realize on a real shade, I'm going to have a big stack of carriers. I'm going to look at the orientation of the carriers. Make sure they're all in the same direction, yeah? But what if I want to get to this one here and just change this lead carrier? So I'm going to go ahead and pull the drive shaft out. Drive shaft comes out. Here's a look at the drive shaft. just has a little groove in it. little groove in the drive shaft that I just can't pick up. There it is, you can see it. See that little groove there? That's where the screw is going to insert in the end. Now, if I'm looking at this thing, if I'm wanting to replace the cord, number one, I need more cord. I'm going to unscrew the cord from the end here. And I'm going to completely remove it. I wouldn't completely remove this. I'd just push it out. This is what holds the cord in place. It's screwing onto this feature here and here and holding both ends of that cord. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the cord out of this thing so we can see what it looks like to remove it. And to do that, I'm just going to cut the knot off, pull the cord out of the pulley end. The pulley looks okay on this one. I'm going to pull the cord completely out of the shade, out of the carriers here and pulling both ends through because we're going to completely record this guy. That one still has a knot in it. And then going to pull it completely out of this pulley assembly here. And I want to check this all out. If I'm dealing with one of these, I want to fix everything that's wrong with it all at once while I've got it apart. So here's my operator in. If I had to change him, that would be pretty easy. This first carrier here is just one of the regular carriers. One of these guys, they're all team players here with this little carriage over the top of it. So if I had to replace the carriage, I'm just going to come up off on the side here and pop him off. And that just pops off of the first carrier. So if this guy broke, all I'd need is another one. If the carrier is still good, I just stick the new one on there. Bam, lead carrier. If I had to replace the carrier completely, I'd take a small Phillips head screwdriver and pop this guy out of the scissor track. Just pop it out like that. That carrier's been removed. So if any of these carriers had to be replaced, it'd be the same activity there. Just put the new carrier back into the hole that the old carrier came out of. So I'm going to stick this guy back on there. Oops, this guy back on here. Make sure it gets in the right hole. And snap it back into place. That's basically the carrier assembly here. I don't see a lot of trouble with the scissor track with this particular product. Um, but if I had to replace a section of it, it just pops apart. Like every bit of scissor track, it's got a snap feature here. I'm going to snap the plastic side out of the
the, the zinc side here. So I would just come up underneath here, stick and twist a little bit, and that guy pops apart. So I could pop it apart and put it back together with a new piece of carrier if I had to. I want to be careful if I'm snapping that apart not to break it um, or snapping it together not to spread those carriers out. Look, I just stabbed myself and made myself bleed a little bit. So that's a look at the carriers. We're going to now go ahead and reassemble our shade. So what I want to look at on these carriers is, are all the carriers in the same direction? If I've replaced a carrier, I want to take the shaft and turn that carrier until it's in the same direction as the rest of the carriers. When I look at it on the end here, this driver is where my shaft's going to go in. So I'm looking at these guys. They all look like they're in the same orientation. If they weren't in the same orientation, one of them would be turned like that. So that guy's not a team player at this point. Let's stick the shaft in, turn that guy. Now they're all pretty much lined up. Now they're completely lined up. I'm going to drive that shaft on through. And I want to take my time at this point and make sure the shaft goes through each carrier. I don't want to spread them out too far. I want to kind of keep them stacked. But there's going to just be a little bit of play, carrier to carrier, to carrier, to carrier, to carrier. And that just drives on through. I put that through my whole stack of carriers. And again, I want to make sure those carriers are in the same orientation before I go any further on this thing. The next thing I'm going to do is bring my cord in, and I want to go ahead. Want to go ahead and and look at this guy here. This is the clutch end here, and I would probably work on the clutch end before I did the other end. Things I want to realize is I've got two pieces of cord that are come down, coming down through this thing. I want to have a lot of extra cord. I can go ahead at this point and lace up my carriers here. Lace my carriers through the pulleys. Pulleys are good. Go ahead and drive that on through. I'm going to bring my carriers over here, and the, the cord's going to go to the back of the shading in this function here goes into these features of the carrier here that hold that cord in place. I'm going to go ahead and put my shaft on. It doesn't really matter what orientation this guy's in. These guys, it really matters. I'm going to go ahead and put my carriers on. Taking a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and put the end barrel on here. Put the end barrel on. Line the hole up with the groove in the uh, shaft there. Bring my screw in. And I'm going to be doing this pretty much laying on the floor of the home with the shade on the floor. I wouldn't be able to necessarily do this with the headrail up on the window. And the problem with doing it on the floor is I want to tilt it up a little so that screw doesn't keep falling out. And I'm looking at that, just screwing that guy in. All right, now that, now that uh, tilter is held in place. I'm going to go ahead and take my cords here. And I don't want to cross them over in any way. I'm going to go ahead and take them and stick them up through this part of the carriers underneath here. This is made to hold the cord for me so the cord doesn't go falling out of the, of the rail there. I'm going to go ahead and lace that up through. And this can take a little bit of time. Um, especially on a big stack of shades. I may want to take some hemostats or needle nose pliers, kind of just work it up through there. Working it, working it. And it wants to kind of stay straight through there. If I was really tense about it, I could take a lacing tool or make a lacing tool that would run that up there for me. So I'm going to take a look at this thing. I've got two cords here coming out the end. I'm going to run one cord around the pulley, the other one's going to tie off. And I've got tons of extra cord here at this point. One's going to tie off, one's going over the pulley. I don't have them crossed over each other. I don't have them twisted or anything at this point coming through here. So I've got them coming out of the clutch, out of the clutch, out of the tilt mechanism coming around. This one's going to go around the end of the pulley here. And I'm, at this point, I probably want to do that. And I'm going to have this laying out in a huge shade on the floor. This one here is going to tie right off at this point. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in him. Uh, that, one's, that one's my anchor, so I know which one's which. This one here, I'm going to pull a little extra cord out, and I would be pulling this down the entire length of the shade. 
I'm going to run this cord through the pulley on the end here. These pulleys don't break often, but if I'm replacing uh, uh, the tilter on a shade, I might replace this pulley as well. Get on that parts request and order those components. So this guy is looped through there. It's not twisted. I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in him as well. Knot on the end there. Ah, perfect. And I'm going to lay these guys in place. I'm going to go ahead and anchor them so I don't lose control of that. And where's my anchor screw? My anchor screw has these two features on the plastic portion that come down and directly squish. It fits into this feature here. And these two features on the outside here squish that cord into place. It holds on to that. So I'm going to go ahead and anchor those guys down. I don't want to lose control of them. I don't want to have to deal with that again in this assembly. And I want it pretty tight. I won't want to go cranking on that screw because it, it could strip out. Just want to get it good and tight. If it did strip out, I'm replacing that lead carrier like we showed you. Now I'm ready to go ahead and put this guy into my head rail. And this is going to be a two-step process. I'm going to slide this shaft all the way through, get it to the end of my shade. This guy over here, I'm going to bring way just a little bit past the end of the drive shaft, even on a large shade. I would take it down past the end of the lock drive shaft. I'm going to bring my head rail back in, set it in front of stuff here. This looks really good. This is going together pretty quick. I'm going to put my cord down inside the head rail. I'm going to come over on this end and put my shaft in here. I want to make sure the shaft doesn't have the cord wrapped around it anywhere. Looks like I've got that in place and I've got the other end of the cord over here to take a look at that. So this is looking pretty good. I'm now going to come into the end of the shade here and make sure this feature here fits in the top and the wheels go into the end of the shade here. So I'm taking a good look at that, making sure my wheels line up. They're fitting into the roller point of the track there. The wheels line up here. Let's look a at the track here. The wheels are going to ride on these two surfaces here on the track and the scissor track has to fit inside it. So I'm sticking all that in the end, making sure my cord's not caught on it anywhere sticking that into the end of the head rail. I'm keeping my finger under this so I can s slide it on in. Then these two features here and here of the tilt mechanism slide into the groove that the wheels are riding on. Excuse me, they slide above the groove the wheels are riding on. There it goes. So that pops all in there. And that with a big long set of carriers, 18 inches of carriers, I'm just going to slowly work that in. It's going to take a little time to do that, um, but that's basically what has to be done. Usually these are 8 feet wide, 72 inches wide, 6 feet, um, something like that. So there's usually a few carriers on there. Now look what's happened. Uh-oh. I did a really good job getting my carriers in there, but now my cord's twisted. Not really sure what's happening here. Got to get that cord from around the drive shaft. Always want to do that before I continue putting it in. And I'm keeping slack off the shade by holding on the other end here. Realize if I'm if this thing's eight feet wide, I'm moving from one end to the other, taking really this, taking it really slow. This feature here fits into these two features here on the rail, just like it did on the other side. Slide it into place there. And I got a little bit of loop of cord there, that's okay. I'm then going to take my drive shaft and pop it through the hole on the end of this pulley. So I got to get the drive shaft in there when I'm putting that in. I may want to take a set of needle nose pliers. I don't want to bug up the shaft and really grab onto it, but I want to get that in place. Get that drive shaft coming through the hole on the end. Look at it from the end. Look at it from the end here and line that shaft up so it pokes through there. Now I'm held on this end and I don't recommend lifting these up if they're 8 feet wide. The carriers are sliding around. I haven't retained those in any way but this guy's got the screw in it. I want to come around to this side, take my needle nose pliers again and I'm turning this thing around because I'm under a camera here and I just tilted it and disengaged my drive shaft. Get the drive shaft going through the other end. I'm going to go ahead and take my needle nose pliers again, hang on to that drive shaft, get my barrel, 
and my itty bitty screw and I'm just going to insert that onto the drive shaft and I'm holding it I'm able to tilt it because I'm holding it up here but I'm going to go ahead show you the barrel going on here the barrel goes with the hole to the groove you can see the hole inside there and I'm just going to drive that in with the Phillips head screwdriver Got to get the screw started in with the end of it in there. Magnetizing your screwdriver, huge benefit. There, you just saw it. So now I've got the shaft retained. I can do anything I want with this, and the shaft's not going anywhere. I've got my tilt mechanism end here. I'm kind of getting to where I feel pretty good about this. I'm, I'm kind of getting close to done. Next steps I have to take are I want to attach the spacer inside the shaft. And I can do that taking a needle nose plier, grabbing onto it here. It don't, doesn't really work that great. I'll just go ahead and mash it in with my finger, take a screwdriver here and locate it, and snap it onto the drive shaft. If you have huge guy hands, which I do not, that's tough. And then I want to stick it all the way over against the clutch, uh, the tilt mechanism here. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my little C spring here, snap ring, whatever you want to call it. Snap it into place. Now those carriers are held in place. It's spaced out from the end, and this end carrier is not going anywhere. Now I can check and make sure it's traversing properly. Just give it a little. Oh, it stacks up nice. Take it out to the other end. I don't have cords lapping over each other. My cords aren't scissoring over each other. Looks pretty good. I got a little bit extra cord there, but I'm going to deal with that once I get the rest of the shade together. So now I'm ready to go ahead and attach my tilt rod. And before I do that, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put the end caps back on. The end cap's held in place with the two screws we had before. Go ahead and attach those guys on. That guy's held in place. Attach this on. That guy's held in place. Come around to the other end here. And I wouldn't be picking this up and aiming it towards a camera to, to do this in a home. Again, if it's eight feet long, I'm going to be working off the floor or off a table. Screw these guys in. And there you go. Voila. Got end caps on. Now I'm ready to attach the tilt rod. Bring my tilt rod in here. And people get kind of goofed up about this. It's easy to forget what to do with a tilt rod. Um, I'm going to go ahead, realize the tilt rod doesn't poke out the bottom of this guy. People want to put this on and then put the tilt rod on and then drive it down. I've got to put the steel piece on here, the little hook on, then put this guy on, move it up, and then the hook's down here for the tilt rod. Bring the flat side of the tilt rod to the little right angle here. And this is tough to do under the camera, but we will overcome it. Squeeze that guy on, slide him down. That guy's held in place, and now I can check and make sure my carriers are all moving in time. Might have wanted to do that before I got the whole thing together. Oh, they are perfect. Now I'm going to set the length of the cord and realize for this application I've got just a mile of extra cord. Oh man, that's a lot of cord. What I want to do at this point is come up underneath the shade and this, at this point I'm probably putting the shade back up in the headrail. Putting the shade back up in the window, excuse me. I mounted it into the mounting brackets. I'm just going to pull this cord through. I don't want the other cord pulling through. I don't want to remove this screw here, just loosen it up slightly. Go, yeah, that's about how much cord I need right there going to go ahead and tighten up the screw here. Again, I don't want to lose control of the cord and have to pull the thing down and re-cord it. Tighten up that screw. I didn't tie a knot yet. I'm going to come down here and attach the tether to the shade. 
So I'm going to make sure my cords aren't looped over each other here down the length. Bring my tether in here. And the cord goes over this surface of the tether here. It's kind of a bearing surface, making sure my cords aren't twisted in any way. Attach that guy on, it kind of snaps together. Then I gotta find my little screw, my ultra tiny screw here that attaches the clamshell of the tether together. Now, once I've got it tethered, making sure it's not twisted, I don't want a lot of slack in this, but I don't want too much want it to be too tight either. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the screw here. And again, this is probably up in the window at this point. I'm going to tighten it up. Make sure it's not twisted anywhere down the length of it. Tighten up my screw. Then I'm going to come up here to the head rail here and I'm going to tie a knot. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead, cut the cord with a little extra here. Give myself room to tie that knot. And I want the knot to kind of end up next to the carrier, help support the cord. I'm going to slide it up in there. And then I'd cut the extra cord off. And that's basically how to disassemble and reassemble a Paramount headrail system.